This is the historic steam launch Alaska. Originally built in 1883, it is located on the River Thames. It is available for private charter. It is also available for occasional public trips. We have just left Bourne End Marina and are now heading upriver towards Marlow. Captain, you're now being filmed. Is that all right? That's fine, yeah. Can you tell me the history of the boat? Yes, uh, it was built um, just where the car park is, where you got on the boat yeah. in 1883. Uh, built by the Horsham brothers. Uh, one was a boat builder, one was a marine engineer. Uh, they were only operated there for just under 10 years. One of the brothers died very young, and then they. Right, carry on, sorry. Yeah. Oh, sorry, we Carry on, so, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, so uh, two brothers, the Horshams, and uh, they were in existence for about uh, 10 years, just under. One of the brothers died very young, and the surviving brother then went back to Cornwall. Uh, but they were quite prolific launch builders, and uh, they had an arrangement with a company in Gloucester called Seekings, who built the engines. Uh, yeah. Seekings uh, didn't exist for that long. Uh, the owner was a Quaker who objected to. Uh, having to quote for a military uh, contract for the government and so he uh, sold the company on the basis of not wanting to do that and uh, uh, they were taken over by assistants of Gloucester who went on to build most of the engines for the uh, steamers on the river over the next century Yeah. and then uh, Seekings went up to Birmingham and set up another company and built small railway engines uh, for a while. Uh, the boat was built as a private boat, uh, but the person that commissioned her never actually took delivery, uh, presumably ran out of money or circumstances changed or whatever. Yeah. Uh, the builders operated her for about three years out of Bourne End yeah. uh, as a passenger boat, and then they sold her to Salter Brothers up in Oxford. Oh yes. Um, they at the time were operating a couple of paddle steamers, and the Alaska was their first propeller driven boat, yeah. and uh, she was... Uh, brought into service um, doing a weekly return service uh, between uh, Oxford and Kingston. Uh, two, two days going down to Kingston, three days coming back up. Oh, a bit like, go, a bit like uh, two men in a boat? Yes, uh, they'd have been doing about 10 knots all day long. Uh, uh, overnight stops in hotels and boarding houses. It cost one pound and ten shillings for the return trip. Wow, cheap. Uh, and she did that um, Originally just as a sole boat, then sort of started building a big fleet and she was relegated to shorter portions and then um, for about the last 20 years of her time as Salters, uh, she was mostly used for uh, party outings and ferry trips up in Oxford. Uh, at the outbreak of war she was sold to Jackson Brothers in Putney. Uh, she worked as a guard boat. Uh, 
sort of home guard on water type arrangement uh, down in London patrolling the river. And then she was caught by uh, Mears of Twickenham who uh, operated her between Richmond and Teddington Lock doing yeah. uh, public trips. And uh, we had the, a gentleman on a few years ago who'd been the deck boy on her during that time. And uh, apparently the captain used to tell everyone about how the boat had been to Dunkirk. And all the passengers gave him large tips and were very impressed. But uh, she never went there and uh, mechanically never would have been able to. Of course. Because she doesn't condense. But uh, a nice little... Uh, Oh, you mean it has a limited range? Uh, no, yeah, if you're pulling salt water in uh, rather than fresh, uh, oh, the boiler yes. would um, wreck. Yeah. Yeah, wreck. And uh, towards the end of the war, she was taken out of service. Uh, she ended up at Kingston. Uh, Putney Sea Scouts got hold of her. Um, one of the things they did was to take the engine and boiler out at Kingston. And then sometime after that, possibly the early 50s, she was pulled up to Oxford with a punt pole. Yeah. We always used to think that was with the folklore, but then we met someone that was actually on board when that happened. Yeah. Uh, she was used as a scout tent up in Oxford for a couple of years. Uh, the scout sold up the cabin and sold us his firewood to raise funds. Goodness. And um, you know, I think 1974 she was rediscovered when a plot of land on Port Meadow in Oxford was being sold. Uh, and this yeah. Hulk uh, decked over with plywood with a petrol pump on it and people boarding uh, punts and skiffs from it uh, it was at the bottom of this plot of land and they wanted to get rid of it to make way for something better and uh, she was identified and then brought down to Peter Freebody's yard at Hervey. Uh, I was going to have to avoid this sailing boat. It's so tricky because they... Yes. And... Um, yeah, she was brought down to Hurley, wrapped in polythene to make her watertight, uh, with an outboard motor strapped on the back. And she was in there for uh, until 1987, being uh, slowly rebuilt uh, using original photographs and whatever. So as you see her now is how she would have been uh, just after entering Salter Brothers' service. Uh, Salter's put the clerestory roof on the cabin, originally yeah. she had a flat roof. Uh, they also put the canopy on, she didn't have that to start with. Yeah. Uh, the well deck uh, in the front of the boat, uh, which was a common thing on steam launches then, private ones anyway. Uh, Salter's, uh, shortly after they got her, they decked that over to make a flush deck so they could get more seating on the top. And then there was a cabin for the uh, captain and engineer underneath uh, yeah. for when they were on the Kingston service. And um, yeah, she was finally uh, relaunched in 87 and recertified and she's been working mainly as a charter boat ever since. We do uh, about three weekends of public trips a year. Yeah, much appreciated. Uh, yes, and uh, the engine originally, when it was uh, put in the boat, uh, when it was being restored, uh, it was thought to be a good match, but not much was known about it. But subsequently we found out that it is the original engine which, uh, after Putney Sea Scouts had taken it out, ended up uh, being wombled by the engineers in Kingston Power Station and used as a sludge pump. Yeah. Um, interestingly enough, um, I did my time at Sea on Oil Tankers, and the, the, you have big centrifugal pumps for getting the oil out, but uh, for getting the last dregs out, you have a reciprocating pump, which is basically about the size of the engine on here. One cylinder is steam, yeah. the other is oil, and uh, use that to pump the dregs out. So yeah. uh, that's probably what saved it, kept it in reasonable good condition, Goodness. had yeah. new bearings and cylinder liners put in. Yeah. Um, that was put in and uh, been yes. yes, you negotiated those sailing boats very skillfully, I noticed. I remember I was on the Waverley and it was going it was in Pool Harbour oh. and a sailing boat got a bit too close and obviously it's not very manoeuvrable and lucky the harbour master was around, uh, came out and shouted at the <laughs> sailing boat, get out of the something way. Yes, I mean, sailing boats aren't meant to keep out of the way but at the end of the day if there's a collision uh, yeah. it's never any one person's fault. Yeah. Uh, but the, these guys here on these Thames A rates, they have to be pretty skilled to sail them. So yeah. I, I, c I generally know that they'll keep out of the way, or they'll yeah. let me know if they want me to go a particular direction, yeah. so yeah. I don't spoil their racing line. Yeah. But, um, I guess you're busy around Henley time. Very, yes. I mean, that's uh, yeah, it's pretty hectic. I mean, it's, it starts off just before Henley, then you have Henley Regatta, then you have the Henley Music Festival the following week, and then yeah. you have the traditional boat festival the week yeah. after that. So, yes, yeah, so the, the whole of July is uh, very hectic. Yeah. So, what are the key statistics with the steam engine? Right, it's a twin simple engine. Uh, 
much to say, there's no uh, expansion on it. Both cylinders are the same size, uh, but it's uh, you have first steam uh, introduced above and below the cylinder, uh, so it pushes down and pushes back up. Uh, and two cylinders um, set 90 degrees apart on the crank, yeah. uh, so you've got four power strokes for yeah. every revolution. So yeah. it's very smooth, very powerful for its size. Maybe not quite as efficient as an expansion engine. Yes, it feels very smooth. Yes, yes. You can't lock at um, top pull, bottom dead centre like an expansion engine. So there's no separate system to yeah. put steam in to get it going. Yeah. Yes, it uh, does exactly what you want. Uh, I think it's uh, about five and a half inch bore, seven and a half inch stroke, something like that. Um, so how many cc's does that make? Oh, what was that? What was that irrelevant? <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't tell. Oh. Um, I mean, it. So, someone said in power it's probably equivalent to a, 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 a two litre um, turbocharged yeah. engine. It's, it's probably about 100 horsepower in modern terms. Back, yeah. back in the day when horsepower was measured a bit different, it was probably yeah. about 10 horsepower, yeah. they would call it. So. But the thing you notice is that the low speed, the pulling power, the torque at the low speed. Yeah, so you, you, you've got a very large propeller, 32 inch diameter with a yeah. 39 inch pitch. So it's very coarse pitch. Uh, you've got full torque as soon as the engine starts turning. Yeah. Uh, very easily driven hull, we're only 9 foot 6 feet, 60 feet long, yeah. um, hardly any draft at the bow and about 3 foot at the stern, so yeah. she accelerates very quickly, yeah. stops very slowly, <laughs> uh, but uh, yes, a, a lot of power, she'll do 14 knots uh, fairly easily, that's her, to her top speed, which is beyond hull speed, but she's yeah. just got so much power, um, so she'll so, so basically do about 3 times the speed we're doing now. Right. I think I'll go and sit at the front. Well, thank you very much for the comment, yeah. yeah no, I'm really fine. enjoying the trip. It's great. Thank you. I'm just, I'm, just, I'm just filming this. Your privacy is just being respected. <laughs> Do you know, I love the smell of steam engines. They are lovely, aren't they? Yeah. Reminds me of that silly joke. It's like, ducks. I can't see ducks and suddenly he bangs Bang his head on the bridge. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> This is just bliss, isn't it? It is bliss. Mm. Utterly bliss. I thought they'd be heaving masses and crowds. They yeah, normally are. I thought so too. Yeah. They're put off by the threat of thunderstorms. Ah, oh, that was fabulous last night. Oh, magnificent, wasn't it? It was. Yeah. Lovely. Yeah. Where was it? Was it? It wasn't. It wasn't quite around here, was it? Even? Well, it was pretty intense in central London. Yes, yeah, okay. I thought. It was oh yes. Urban heat it's island, nice. isn't it? Mm. He goes up in the day and yeah. that makes sense.
It's like people buying a Rolls Royce saying, oh, it must be very thirsty with petrol. <laughs> if you can fill the car, you can afford the petrol. Exactly. That's it. Can you imagine the boys living in that house? Yeah, there's a child bliss rolling down that hill. <laughs> they would, yes. Quack, quack, quack. Quack, quack, quack. Quack, 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 daddy. And it's also high en uh, enough up so there's no risk of flooding. Yes. Yes, Don't be tempted to go for a swim. <laughs> Look, it's bank holiday weekend and the river's empty. Isn't that amazing? That's bizarre, isn't it? What's that about? They had the emptiest I've seen it. Is that somewhere we should have been? <laughs> <laughs> Has something happened that nobody's told us about? Because you see those old pictures of the riverside, you know, the Edwardian times, yes. they're absolutely Strong. packed. Tractor! <laughs> He's on a lovely steamboat. Oh, yeah, tractor. <laughs> a massive Ferguson tractor.
this. Winter Hill on the left. Yes. I think all the trees, all the trees got flat into that big storm. So is it Cuckoo Dean on the other end? Is that right? Uh, I don't know. I think yes, so. It is. Yeah. And there's a Cookham Dean bottom. Is that why it's called Winter Hill? Because the trees got flat. No. <laughs> no, I think it was called that first. Yeah. So that makes sense. Oh dear, is it broken down? It's like the Titanic, wasn't it? They suddenly say, oh, why yes, are the engines stopped? I think I'll enjoy the view from the back of the boat now. <laughs> So, start off we've got the engine, going down looking at the engine, uh, two pistons, double acting, crankshaft on the bottom, the eccentrics at the ends, control forward and reverse, uh, driving off the back of the engine we've got the shaft, which drives the propeller, no gearbox, just a direct drive, uh, from that we've got an alternator which generates electricity for the boat, uh, on the other side the blue tank you see underneath the bags of wood, our hot water tank, we make hot water from steam and uh, this way we've got the boiler on the front of the boiler we've got sight glass, sight glass at the bottom we've got a damper to control the air and either side we've got a fuel store inside the fuel store we get the fuel uh, compressed, compressed bricks of wood waste and they get fed into the fire fire makes the steam, the steam drives the boat along. Uh, to bring the water in we take water from the river to feed the boiler. We use this device here called an injector uh, which uses steam pressure to suck water from the river and into the boiler. And we'll look at the side glasses here. See we've got about about half a half a side glass worth of water so plenty of water to carry on with and a row of valves across the top to control what, what the steam is doing. Uh, I think that's about it down here. Look around. Brilliant. There you go. Thank you very much. Thanks.